I played all these Italian guys. I'm losing every week, whatever. I'm like, I have to go to France because I'm like three out of main draw for the French Open. So I'm like, damn, like I got to play qualities, like whatever. I can't play like Lyon or something like an extra week. So I go to French. I end up like Berrettini or something pulls out. I end up getting in main draw. And so I'm there basically for qualities, but I'm in main draw. So I'm there for like an extra week. And I'm training at the at the French, and I'm training um, um like unbelievably well, like best like week of clay tennis of my life. And I'm like, dude, like this is it. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm figured, in the tournament. I'm, I'm like, dude, like I'm like I, I figured <laughs> I'm it out. Pe- I'm peaking. Like, <laughs> like I might get my first win this week. And <laughs> then I'm sitting with uh, I think Ben Shelton and Tiafo in like the this is like three days before main draw or something and. Um, draw ceremonies happening and they're like I think Dean's got it up on YouTube and uh, I, I play a seed like it, it shows like me next to a seed and they're drawing the seeds and but I didn't even know that I was like going get, I, like grabbing my sushi or something and I come <laughs> back and Dean's like has this huge smile on his face he's like guess who you play I'm like who he's like like the best tennis player ever I'm like no way <laughs> Like no way I play Novak, and he's like, "Yeah, first round." I was like, "Well, I don't know if I'll win. I'll be getting my first clay court win this week." You know? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, th- but that was the story of my clay court season. Obviously, ended in a. But I, I mean, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. You played your best, surely played your best match on clay. I mean, yeah. And you're yeah. obviously like psyched for that match. Yeah. He's been an yeah. idol of yours forever. Yep. You've trained with him, yep. so at least I was like, you've had some history there, but. Compared to weeks prior, I felt like in that match you played the best that you had played in the yeah I mean, nine weeks I mean, before. Sure. Like you had for prepared sure. and you played, a, you pushed him and yeah. No, I mean when you play a guy like that, um, things in your I mean not just a guy like that, but anyone that's you know let's say you have nothing to lose against you, a lot of times you revert to what you do best and like I played that match without thinking much about clay without thinking all the variables a lot of times you play any someone you know maybe you're supposed to be you start thinking about so many things like oh is my form is this working today against novak there's no there's nothing you like you can think about. you don't have the energy to think about hey is my form that you just gotta like trust that you have it that you have that you can put a ball on the court or else you're losing oh oh no to novak i'm Center court. Oh, center court. Yeah. So I, but I, I played. Yeah, I played really well. I also was going through with something where, with like, some injury stuff where I changed my serve up a little bit, which is like, so many people are texting me like, "Dude, what do you do to do to your serve?" I'm like, "Trust me, I would never do anything to my serve if it wasn't for like pains and stuff." And so that was something I was dealing with too. But like, I still played. A pretty good match against Novak, and, uh... but with the with the Novak match too, you have a bit of experience with him, right? Like you you've known him from before. Or... Yeah, I mean, I uh, I met him at the U.S. Open in twenty twenty. I mean, it, there's a picture of us when I was like five years old that I kind of met him, but I obviously like don't. <laughs> neither of us like really remember <laughs> yeah, that we were, inter- we were interaction. Super close, I swear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think well, we got each yeah. other for decades. I got a picture with him or something, but <laughs> um, remember me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, no fam. Uh, <laughs> walk, walking out in a French Open with the picture. Yeah. <laughs> no, I could care less. Yeah, I met him at U.S. Open like twenty twenty one. I think it was right after I got done with college, and they gave me a wild card for the qualies. I made third round in qualies, and he had met my mom's crazy, and he my mom tries to talk. <laughs> so my mom just I think went up to him one day and just started talking to him, and he was super nice about it. So most people might like just blow her off as a crazy person. He talked to her, and so he knew who Love I was. <laughs> he knew who I was before I kind of like met him. Um, and then I played my third round match against Chungaletti. He had like seven. Ma- I had seven match points against him. One of them, he's literally hitting a diving volley where he's on the floor. I think I've won the match. Like I think I just qualified for my first Grand Slam at like 500 in the world. It was like ridiculous, but he had other plans. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I lost, and it was Came like out of the green. Yeah. <laughs> It was like the most heartbreaking loss ever. It was like you couldn't have like scripted it worse. Like I was like, the guy's literally, literally on the floor. Like gets up, hits a squash shot winner on like match point. I it was it was it was my whole family there watching. It was like it was rough. It was rough. Uh, And then I get done, and and the next day I forget why I came back to the courts, but I came back to the gym, uh, and I'm I go to the gym to like I guess stretch or something. 
I, I'm not professional. That, that, that was, I wasn't professional. <laughs> Why so would I, I ever be in the gym? After I, I, don't, I don't know what the hell I was doing there. I forget. Yeah. But uh, but Novak's in there. He's like, dude, I saw the match. Like, that's like tough. <laughs> Nothing else Sucks. to really say. Like, like tough. I, would, I wouldn't have lost that. And, and I, it's okay. Couldn't, hey, couldn't be me. It's okay. Champ. Yeah. Keep your head up. Like I said, I was in the gym, but I'm I got flip flops on, like nothing. And he's like, "Dude, do you want to hop in a fitness?" I, I forget how it came up, but he's like, "Do you want to hop in a fitness session with me?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" Like, it's actually well with those kind of guys, you know, almost it's more valuable if you do that kind of stuff with them than hitting, because you see how they hit, you see, you don't see how they practice when they're really practicing, but you see how they hit when they're at tournaments, which is kind of like how we all hit, just you know, relaxing hits, like pretty simple. But the training stuff off court, you know, the diet, that, those kind of things, like that's something that coming out of college, like was huge, very, very valuable for me to learn. And uh, so I, I was like, yeah, man, like, let, let me go get my shoes, <laughs> grab my shoes, did, did a full, cool, full like, on training my flops. <laughs> yeah, did a full on fitness session with the guy. It was he was super nice. I mean, dude, he was going for the calendar Grand Slam that week. And uh, and like, yeah, and he took the time to like kind of like put some like i joined in his fitness session with his fitness coach and all like i mean i, I don't think i'd do that for someone if i was like super focused and had my fitness tra- you know like i'm trying to just get my stuff done so i i really appreciated that he like did that but uh so i knew him from that i i had seen him around at some other tournaments i saw him in, i played soccer with him in australia this year um in adelaide or something uh obviously he's a peculiar person in a lot of ways like and he's got and he's got his routines like he's not I'm not getting dinners with him and stuff like that. He's especially at tournaments. Like he's, you know, got that down. He's probably probably as a chef too, but um, uh, you know, like before our match in, in the French Open, I was in ice bath. He comes up to me. He's like joking with me. Like ah, I gotta play you. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta play me. Yeah, like, yeah bro, I'm coming uh, for I'm you. Coming man. for you. Uh, no, but change my serve. Just to, yeah. yeah, just for you. I'm yeah, back yeah. to pinpoint. Yeah. Watch out, dog. But uh, no, that experience was crazy, man. I mean, like. Philip Chatrier was packed. Like, I mean, that was my first main draw of a Grand Slam ever, too. So it's like it was surreal for sure. And I, I thought I, I mean, I could have done a little better than I did, I think. But I, I did pretty well. Like, especially third set, I pushed him pretty, pretty good. Um, but the tie break, the guy just locked the fuck. In. Like, it was scary, <laughs> dude. Scary level. I thought I played an okay tie break too, but like, just wouldn't miss a ball. And then like anything I, I do to him, he had an answer for. Um, but I mean, the biggest thing with Novak, man, is that like, I learned a lot from that match and, and a lot from being around a lot of the top guys, um, watching them play is like, they're very, I don't want to say this in a derogatory way. It's not at all like a shot against them because this is what the highest level of tennis is, but it's, it's very unimpressingly impressive. Like when I played him, you know, I, I'm playing some of these challenger guys sometimes and I'm like, like watching them hit like. 140 mile an hour backhands down the line on the line and you're just like what what the like whoa so you think almost like the highest level of tennis is you just can't see the ball going past you it's just you're just getting like wrecked right <laughs> but um with him it was like so like the way he played was so methodical but like i'm still in the point like i'm playing but he's just like w- still wrecking me but like in a very <laughs> constructive in a nice way. way like he's <laughs> he's putting balls you know like three feet inside each line where he's ending the point with like on the ninth ball, he's ending the point, hitting a winner like almost in the middle of the court because of the way he's like he's put me two to the backhand, then running me to the forehand, then back to the backhand, then one to the forehand, then back to the backhand, and then finally the one he really wants. I mean, he could have hit a winner on the first ball, but the, he waits until the ninth one to be like, okay, I'm gonna put you away, and it's like damn, like, just breaks like, but just high percentage breaks you down, so you just you can see how they do that week in and week out. Same with like you know Medvedev, of Titipas. These guys like you, we watch them play. They're not going like they're not redlining ever. You know, I played Tony Wu in the U.S. Open Quali's first round, and like the first set, I'm just like, what? <laughs> what is going on, dude? Like the guys just hitting winner left and right. I'm like, I, I no, like the guy's better than Novak. Like, like <laughs> yeah, you know. But but then you see like it's very hard to sustain that kind of level, and like that that was a huge learning experience for me because I'm starting to like develop my game into more like instead of being hot or cold on cold on a certain day you're more like methodical you're like okay you know play the percentages even even if that shot looks really like tempting to take you kind of be like 
oh let me break this guy down over a course of a match see how see how it goes and you see that those top the top guys are are doing that so do you feel like you learned that from that match specifically or you kind of had that feeling already like because you played a few of the higher level tournaments before then right yeah i mean yeah like i learned a lot from that match because i literally played the best guy to ever play and and seeing how you know he beat me was like okay like maybe there's guys that have played a better level than that like than what i'm playing against in a certain moment but you can see how that like what he does translates to like success over 10 years versus like you know i think a lot of guys can beat someone else i i i think the top 10 guys are beatable now but they'll make it very very hard to beat you every single time you play so like and, and that's why they're consistently semis finals because like it's like yeah, you can play a good set against them, but can you do it for the whole match? It's tough, especially three out of five. I mean, look. So, I mean, that's it. I, I thought that that was the, kind of the case. It's like, you know, you want to play high percentage and stuff like that. But seeing, you know, uh, I also, I mean, grew up watching no Novak highlights with Rafa where they're playing, like, some of the most ridiculous points I've ever seen, too. But, but what you realize is, like, they have that base level, right? And then, like, if someone pushes them really hard, they'll also be able to kind of, raise that base level and, and start to play maybe they're taking a little more risk a little more risk because they have to because they're playing nadal who's also like unreal so but like you know you have your base level and you kind of build on that and that's what i learned from playing novak it's like he didn't have to he didn't play he didn't even play close to his best against me 